bottom weakness watch and pray find in me thy all in all cause Jesus paid it all and all to him I yield and sin had left a crimson stain he washed in a whiny stain service. And so I want you to go ahead and grab your Bible and open it to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Uh, Hebrews 10, 19. And today I'm sitting in front of the, uh, the new missions wall, which is in the mall way right outside uh, our grounds for Missions Cafe. And the wall's not finished yet, but, but I wanted to film in front of it today as a reminder of how God uses Highland Park to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The map is a reminder of, of really what happens when committed Christians uh, 
come together as part of the local church. Uh, you see, one of the weaknesses I believe in the church today is there are many people who are fans of Jesus instead of committed followers of Jesus. Uh, a fan is an enthusiastic admirer. Uh, the word fan is short for, for fanatic, and we all know people who are fanatical about their favorite sports team. And there are some Christians who act like fans when it comes to their relationship with Christ. Uh, they admire Jesus. They're, they're, uh, they're even excited about the Lord. Uh, they show up for a few hours each week and they cheer for Jesus. Uh, but a follower of Jesus is someone who goes beyond cheering uh, enthusiastically for Jesus. They're, they're, they're willing to lay down their life for Jesus. And so I want us to look at Hebrews 10, 19 through 25. And here's what it says. It says, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another to, in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. This is the key verse. Uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. A Christian uh, one time came to me and they asked me, uh, Pastor, why should I go to church? Uh, and I thought for a moment, and here's what I said. I said, you don't go to church. You, you are the church. And while it's true the church is not a place, a church is what exists when believers gather together. But I'm saying a fully devoted follower of Jesus consistently gathers together with other believers. Uh, it looked a little different. It has over the last three months. Uh, but as we slowly start to regather uh, on our campuses, I, I kind of want to use this as an opportunity uh, to speak to you about the importance of God's people gathering together. And so over the next few weeks, I want to give you five reasons why we should gather with other believers on a regular basis. Uh, first of all, we gather with other believers uh, out of obedience to God. One of the reasons we gather together is because God's word commands us not to forsake meeting together. And sadly, there are many Americans who seldom ever attend church. Many people only appear in church three times during their lives. They may be christened or dedicated as a child, as a baby by their parents. They may get married in a church. They may have their funeral in a church. So in other words, some people only attend church, uh, as I heard one pastor say, to get hatched, matched, and dispatched. So uh, take that for what it is. I want you to listen to what James Davis wrote, though. He said, how important it is for Christians to be faithful to the local assembly. If a person is willingly and consistently forsaking the assembling of himself or herself, then he or she cannot claim to be true to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and the church are not identical but they are inseparable. The passage of scripture that we read earlier from Hebrews, it tells us that there are five times uh, where the writer says, let us. And so we're gonna look at all five lettuces. <laughs> so I'm calling them uh, five healthy heads of lettuce for Christians. And here's the very first one. Let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner. Now, the English Standard Version says this, as is the habit of some. Uh, we all know what habits are. Uh, habits are uh, behavior patterns that we get into. Uh, habits are something that we do so often that when we do them without, we, we do them without even thinking about it. If you were to Google bad habits, you'd find a list of the top 10 bad habits. Smoking, overspending, gambling, Overeating, drinking too much, taking drugs, complaining, being chronically late, eating junk food, and the new one for our generation being super connected, texting, tweeting, Facebooking. Uh, well, the writer of Hebrews points out that some people 
Uh, obviously, those calling themselves Christians had developed a bad habit of staying away from the assembly. Uh, it was true 2,000 years ago, and I'd have to say it's certainly true today. Uh, there is great, great spiritual value in getting in the habit of showing up. Woody Allen, the comedian, here's what he one time said. He said, 80% of success is showing up. Yeah, Woody Allen also said this. He said, my one regret in life is that I'm not someone else. And so, you know, I don't know if you believe Woody Allen, but I did Google showing up and I started reading a blog and a few sentences into this blog, I realized this blog was written by a dog. It was a pug to be exact. And uh, I do suspect the owner helped him a little bit, but listen to what the blog said. It said, I hear my master opening the door of the refrigerator. So I head over to the kitchen and I see that he's making himself a turkey sandwich. Now, unlike most humans, us dogs have very little dignity. So I figure, what have I got to lose? I get into position seated near his feet and I look up at him with my adorable pug face. He looks down at me and he asks, are you here for a piece of turkey, buddy? He dangles a piece of sliced turkey just above my head. I give him all the right signals. Uh, ears are pointed up, eyes wide, tail wagging. He lowers the slice of turkey to my mouth and he says, okay, here you go. Uh, the turkey is as good as I thought it would be. He doesn't notice it, but I'm smiling. Since then, every time I hear my master rustling in the refrigerator, I head on over there and I give him the look. Uh, I don't always get what I'm after, but every now and then he tosses me a slice of turkey or a chunk of last night's grilled chicken or even a doggy treat. I don't always get something, but if I just show up, there's a chance that I might. And when I do get something, well, I forget about all the other times I didn't. Us dogs have a, have a pretty poor memory anyway. And here's what the blog says. Lesson learned. If you lie around on your doggy bed, scratching yourself all day, nobody's going to bring you a thing. But if you just show up where the action is, and if you give off the right signals, you never know. And that's pretty profound stuff considering uh, it came from a dog. Uh, but here's my take on that. If you stay in bed on Sunday mornings, uh, browsing the internet, lounging on the couch, watching old movies, uh, then don't be surprised when you feel spiritually empty. But if you'll get in the habit of simply showing up, good things are going to happen spiritually. Secondly, we gather together with other Christians to worship the Lord. You know, there are plenty of groups that gather together on a regular basis. Civic clubs meet. Uh, bunko groups meet. Re retired guys meet and have coffee or uh, they play dominoes. See, the thing that makes the church different is that we gather to honor and to worship our Creator. The second healthy head of lettuce says this, it says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. You see, if you'd been a Jew living in the time of Jesus, you could approach the temple in Jerusalem, but you couldn't get very near. If you were a woman, you could only proceed to the fence that separated the court of women from the court of, uh, of the Israelites or the men. If you were a man, but not a priest, there was another fence that stopped you. Uh, you couldn't get near to the presence of God. If you were of the tribe of Levi and you were a priest, uh, you could work around the outer areas of the larger temple building, but even a priest couldn't enter into the place where the Shekinah glory of God dwelt. That area was separated from everyone by this huge, thick curtain. And only the high priest could lift that curtain and enter into the Holy of Holies. And that was just a few hours, one day a year. But when Jesus died on the cross, here's what the Bible says. It says that the curtain of the temple was ripped in two from top to bottom. 
Two men could stand at the bottom. They could, they could possibly rip it from bottom to top, but, but it was God himself who ripped the curtain from top to bottom. And now, through the sacrifice of Jesus, God was communicating, our high priest being Jesus, we now can enter into the very presence of God. One of the first Bible verses I memorized as a child uh, was Psalm 122.1, which basically says this, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we're still teaching our preschoolers at Highland Park that very verse. Uh, now, when I was a kid, you've heard me say this, uh, not unique to me. I've heard other pastors say this. I had a drug problem. Uh, yeah, my parents drug me to church every time the doors were open. Uh, I wanted to go as a child, uh, but when I became a teenager, I didn't necessarily always want to go, but they still drug me to church. And, uh, and I'm glad they did. And so parents, listen, don't ask your kids if they want to go to church. Tell them that you're all going to go to church. Don't send them, bring them. Let me ask you, do you really love to worship? Is it something that you look forward to during the week? For some of you guys, it is. But if others of you were honest, you'd say, oh, I could take it or I could leave it. Listen to the thrill of the psalmist. Listen to what he says. This is Psalm 100. He says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And so we've been praying for a spiritual awakening for years. How will we know when that spiritual awakening happens? I mean, for sure, there'll be prayer groups springing up in homes, springing up in businesses, starting in schools all around America. But another mark will be that we will see church attendance in America I think surge to unprecedented levels. So many people will be coming to Christ and showing up to follow him. We won't even have time to count them. May we be those people. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the truth of your word that we've studied today. Thank you, Lord, for uh, taking the time to show us the importance as your people to gather together. And Lord, we thank you that even though over the last three months we've had difficulty because of this pandemic and because of trying to uh, create a safe environment, that we still had the opportunity to gather together, uh, even though it was online. But we thank you for that. And Jesus, now we thank you that you're opening the doors back up where we can slowly start gathering back together and do it safely. And so, Father, our prayer is that we would not forget how precious the gift is to be able to gather together. It would be important to us because it's important to you. So help us to be people that gather and worship. We gather out of obedience and we gather because we long to gather together with other brothers and sisters in Christ. As always, Father, we pray for our church and your protection for her. We pray for what's happening in our world, what's happening in our community. We pray for all the unrest that is going on around the world today. We ask that you would step in and that you would intervene and that you would bring healing and you would change hearts and you would make them more like you. Thank you, Jesus, for the love you have for us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So thank you for tuning in tonight. Don't forget Sunday morning right here at our 231 campus and at our Kingswood at Southport campus will have services. The 231 campus, 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., uh, and then 11 a.m. We've got everything set up where social distancing is there, and we've got the sanitizer that's available. We sanitize every seat and doorknobs and everything as you come in. Water fountains are turned off. We're doing everything we can uh, to create a safe environment for you in the midst of what we're dealing with. And I believe we've done that. Um, and the reality is, if you're going to the grocery store, if you're 
running down to Target or Walmart, you're heading out to the beach, wherever that may be, I promise you, uh, we have created an environment that's safer than any of those areas. You don't believe me? Come, check it out. We've got separate entrances and exits. We have everyone leave and only let folks in 15 minutes before each service. And so uh, the staff's done a great job uh, just getting these campuses ready for you to join together. But I tell you, I miss you guys. I miss you not being here. I know some of you are in a, uh, uh, a little bit more uh, heightened demographic group. Uh, the threat level is greater for you because you have a pre-existing condition or uh, maybe you're advanced in age. You've had your doctor say, look, you don't need to be getting out of the house. You need to be staying right there. We understand that. And we would never want you to go anywhere that was going to put you at risk. And for those reasons, we have our online services. And we would encourage you to continue to join us there. But a lot of you guys, get back in the habit. Come, bring your children. I'm telling you, there is nothing any more powerful uh, than a child seeing their mom, their dad, worshiping Jesus Christ. So you come. This Sunday, I'm gonna be making some announcements about some exciting things that are gonna be coming up and happening in the life of our church as we get back to doing what we do. Uh, as always, I love you guys. Thank you for letting me be your pastor, and uh, I hope to be able to see you uh, in the face, in the flesh, this coming Sunday. Have a blessed rest of the week.